Oh, hey guys. Just running over some things to make sure they're butter smooth and uh, was just uh, thinking uh, since I'm in my gear, maybe this week we'll, uh, we'll just talk about one of my favorite topics, firearms. And everything that entails from safety to practice to function and really setups, uh, whether it be gear or your actual rifle. So uh, I think it'll be fun. I think you guys have enjoy uh, would enjoy it because I see a lot of comments. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing this week. So let's just jump into it with a, a reload. And learn some things about guns. Alright, before we get into anything, we're going to have to talk about some serious stuff. Safety. Because I care about you guys and I want to make sure we all kind of are on the same par of what to do and what to think. Uh, because I know I do a lot of crazy reloading, I do a lot of dry fire, all that, but it is what it is. Dry fire is when you completely uh, make your gun safe. You take out all rounds, you put them in a box somewhere else and you forget about it and you keep the magazines that you're working with empty, uh, clearly checked before you start going over your teens, and just, you know, it, it, it becomes just a safe object overall. Now, when you have something like this, and you do have it, I'm gonna turn off the safety, um, and this is not a loaded weapon, but still I, tr I respect the rules of firearm safety. Uh, I treat this like a loaded weapon, I never pointed at anything I don't intend to shoot, there's nothing over there, um, especially not a human being. Uh, and if I was to shoot this gun, I will have to make sure what I'm shooting at and what's behind it. Because a bullet will travel and you might be shooting one thing, but you end up shooting five things because your bullet carries through it, especially drywall or, or other soft material. Um, uh, the next one, uh, and this is a good one that not, not a lot of people talk about, uh, Intoxicants and, and guns. Um, never drink and be around firearms. Just is a bad idea. I honestly quit and really stopped drinking altogether. Not because of firearms, but because it's just a better lifestyle choice uh, altogether. But um, yeah, uh, that's so, some of them. There might be a couple, um, a couple more here and there. Oh, keep your finger off the trigger. That's a big one. Uh, I'm never putting my finger in here until I am ready to actually uh, disengage the, the or, or really uh, carry my uh, rep, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so when I'm, when I'm in the ready position and then I go up, you see my finger's completely off the trigger until I'm ready to click it and disengage. Um, but, you know, all, with all that being said, Keep those in mind when you're handling a firearm. It is just a tool at the end of the day. What if you have no bullets in it, the gun's on safety. I mean, people drop guns all the time, people throw guns, it's just a tool, it's, it, it really is. Not saying you should, but if it's safe, there's no bullets, it's on you. Do you want to damage your gun or not? That's up to you. Uh, in my experience, guns are pretty reliable and durable, depending on the brands you get. I mean, it's not pot metal, I'm, I, I have, I specifically pick a Kalash style of rifle for, for that reason. The gas piston system and the manufacturing of these types of rifles are just usually upper, upper scale, while the AR platform and a lot of their brands, there's just a lot of small moving parts and more moving parts equals more opportunities for something to lock up, to jam, to stove pipe a bullet in your, in your thing and explode your gun, which I don't want. Um, so now that we kind of went over safety, we're going to be going over function. So I'm going to carry over to non-geared moose, because I am in a plate carrier and plates and this is getting kind of hot in a ski mask, and we'll set up a table and kind of go over how an AK actually functions and works, and what I prefer for brands, what I prefer for uh, styles. Uh, this is totally preference, you can skip this if you want, um, but with that, we'll just keep going on to that. All right. Now that uh, Geared Up Moose kind of went over some safety, kind of gave you the intro, we'll be going over my favorite style of rifle, an AK. And, uh, I mean, call it an affinity for Russian things. Uh, nothing's more Russian than an AK other than vodka, communism, and Putin. But, uh, you know, I personally just love the platform for its durability. I love the caliber, uh, the 7.62 by 39 round. 
Um, I just love the reloading concepts. I just love the build. Uh, and that's kind of why I strayed away from ARs. Now, um, an AK is a gas piston system. They do make gas piston ARs. They're more expensive, uh, but it still comes with its complications and it's, it's, uh, I mean, this is just built for that. So that's, that's, this is just what I like. And today, I guess we'll just be going over how, what it really means uh, to shoot an AK and how it functions as a gun um, because it's a pretty interesting concept and it's good to know. Um, now, this is a semi-automatic weapon. So when I squeeze the trigger and the hammer goes down, the system does what it does. It comes back, it resets uh, the, 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 you know, hammer. Um, so I can click the trigger and do it all over again. Um, there's very hard to get automatic weapons in America. I know m movies, Hollywood, all that really portrays every uh, games all portray. You can just pick up a, you can go to a random house, find a rifle, and it's a automatic rifle. Excuse the language, but it's not. It's not that case. Um, it's. Um, uh, 1986, there's a bill passed that made it really hard to get suppressors and automatic weapons, which kind of sucks because an automatic weapon is great for, you know, suppressing fire, it's great for uh, being able to engage multiple targets, uh, it's just uh, a lot more effective as a tool rather than, and plus you can go from fully auto to semi auto rather than right now if I went from semi auto to fully auto I'm going to jail which I'm never going to do because all, everything is on the books everything is legal registered and uh, I like to keep it that way I like to stay legal I encourage you guys to do it too uh, don't if you're underage don't be going messing around with guns until you you can unless you have a uh, obviously a parent that can uh, kind of teach you these concepts and all you have to do is dad mom can I? Can you teach me how to shoot? I think I'm responsible enough to handle this. Uh, and just, you know, everybody should. Everybody should know how. Everybody sh should know these concepts, I believe, whether it be uh, an American who can have a Second Amendment right or someone else in a different country that doesn't have as, uh, uh, you know, set up of these foundations for defending your life and defending your home front that, that we have uh, here in our country. And yeah, you can make a, a bunch of school shooting jokes, you can make, oh, blah, 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 you're gonna get shot. It doesn't happen like that. And, and there's a lot of other worse stuff happening. Shootings still happen in other countries. They're just uh, not as prevalent. I mean, Jesus Christ, there was a hand grenade attack in Sweden. Like, a hand grenade. And, and that's kind of not really talked about. So that's kind of crazy. Um, but let's just get over that and let's get back onto the guns. So what you got here is your base gun. This is broken down, this is field stripped, so you probably notice there's some stuff missing up top, but we'll fix that in a bit. But right now we're going to be talking about this, right here. This specific block is called a receiver. And now, a receiver is a registered part, you have to register a receiver. I don't have to register this part, I don't have to register that, I don't have to register this. But if I, if I go and buy a receiver, I need to be background checked, so they can put me in the system and they can know where this is going. You know, this is the gun itself, the receiver. You know, not the parts, this is the gun. Now, with this, you can see, I'm gonna look inside, you can see a hammer, you can see all the internal systems, and I mean, it's just simple. You squeeze the trigger, hammer comes down like that. So, pretty, pretty sim simple. Now, it is a gas system. Now, you might have heard me say gas piston and you're going, Moose, what's a gas piston? Well, when I squeeze the trigger, the bullet travels down the barrel, you know, down here, past this tube and out the barrel. And as it's going past, the gas is being recycled in, pushing the piston, this, backwards on a spring uh, and resetting the hammer at the same time, going back and pushing it. So it can do it all over again. And basically until you're out of your 30 rounds, that's how the concept works. And I mean, it's super simple, super simple. Very, very, you know, low amount of parts and everything. I'm sorry, I'm getting caught up with my words. I'm just getting so passionate about these AKs. Uh, I mean, you have your things like this. The bolt. The bolt fits inside your, your, your piston here. Angles down into a groove. You put your, your whole system back on, on this little, like, track. You slide it forward. You put your spring in. 
And at the base, this is a functional AK rifle. I've seen people run them out with, without the top covers. I've seen them run out of, I mean, AKs just are, 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 are a do-all, be-all gun. So they, they really will churn through some of the wildest stuff, in my opinion. And now I always have trouble with the top cover sometimes. It's always a little annoying because there's a teeny little groove and sometimes it's different. I have another AK rifle where I can just push the button and it pops out. Super ease of use. And at this point you just put it in the magazine. If it had rounds, pack it and you'd be ready to go. But because we we're being safe, we disengaged uh, bullets. We made sure our gun's functional. We made sure there's nothing in the chamber and everything's good to go hunky dory, right? So now you got your gun, you're feeling, you're feeling jazzy, you're saying, now, now how can I get better with this? Um, and that's very, very simple. Uh, dry fire, uh, on top of going to the range and actually practicing these concepts. But before you do anything, say drawing from your holster, or you know, slinging your rifle and all that, dry fire at home a million and one times, so you actually have those transitions down, because you don't want to be going to the range, messing up, accidentally uh, discharging or negligently discharging and hitting somebody or even scaring somebody like that because they're all gonna look at you like you're really dumb. So don't do that. Practice, practice, practice. Take it to the range, take it slow, make sure you have the base concepts and then start ramping up. Um, there's a lot of different books. One of my favorite uh, competitors in the competition world, I do shoot competition. Um, is Ben Stoger. He uh, is a ch world champion on the IPSC, the International Practical Shooting Confederation, and also the USPSA, the United States Practical Shooting Association. So um, these two, uh, you know, these two uh, big associations and uh, groups are uh, the ones that kind of sponsor and host these big shooting competitions. And Ben Stoger is a, uh, is. A complete whiz, a god, so quick. And one of his biggest things that he pushes is dry fire. Because you get those motions down so well that you're gonna shave time off no matter what. And that, and you'll feel incredibly comfortable with your gun. And it shouldn't just be like, oh, you're dominant hand. Work both hands, become ambidextrous. The body is a fluid thing, both left and right side. So you can, you know, I, I mean, I did that the wrong left and right side your left, my right, whatever, but it's, we're fluid, you know, we're exactly almost symmetrical on both sides. So if you have a weapon that can be, you know, my carry handgun is ambidextrous because I want to be able to work both hands, you know, I want to be able to do exactly what I can do with my dominant hand that I can do with my non-dominant hand, especially when you start getting into cover versus concealment and how you have to peek a wall versus here versus there where you switch the gun in your hand. I mean, obviously like this stance to this stance, I mean, it's two different ones, left and right. So you'll just become overall comfortable. And with that, you'll feel more secure in yourself. And honestly, before all of guns and everything, start learning self-defense through uh, simpler means, especially for a lot of the younger people that can't get access to this stuff. Um, go out, learn karate, learn MMA, learn boxing. Learn a frontline defense before you rely on this. I have done so, uh, so I can trust myself in a situation where it's a close proximity. And honestly, you don't want to escalate things sometimes. Uh, and a gun can escalate things. So make sure you know how to keep yourself cool and collected without the gun. Because you can't rely on that completely, you know? You gotta rely on your wits. You gotta rely on your training and your ability to know how to do things, such as, uh, you know, your, your rep repetitions, your medical, uh, your, your, your drawing from the holster, everything. You, it's just, you practice it so much that, and the saying goes is, you don't rise to your training, you fall to your training. So with that, uh, we'll just leave it, we'll leave it at that. We got a little serious. Uh, you learned a little bit about guns. You learned a little bit about safety. And um, with that, I think we'll see each other next week. But first, uh, I know uh, if you guys want to help out, I uh, opened a P.O. box. Um, if you guys would love to send me a letter or a package or whatever, link is in the, like the address is in the description. And if you guys really want to help out, um, I have released merchandise. This isn't the mask. I was wearing it last week um, and the shirts. 
Um, I also have stickers and keychains, um, which are cheaper, so uh, don't feel like you need to spend a lot of money if you want to help out. Uh, but every little bit helps. It continues, you know, with the videos, the props, um, editing, being able to keep my internet on so I don't live in internal darkness. Uh, with, with, with things like that so just just know uh, and even though uh, a like a comment a share goes a long way if you can't do that so uh, guys thank you for everything thank you for all the nice words thank you for just holding it down and with that we'll see each other next week all right guys peace